So I made a poll a few days ago asking which CPU is faster, a 1 core CPU at 4.6 GHz or a 2.3 GHz CPU with 2 cores. Now there's 1300 of you that answered apparently on YouTube using the poll function, which either is because the question is actually interesting or the poll function is actually broken as well or both on YouTube. Well, lots of you actually picked the one core at 4.6 GHz to be the faster option at 57% choosing that versus 43% choosing the two cores at 2.3 GHz. Well, personally, my own uh, guess is that the two cores at 2.3 GHz would be faster. And what I mean by faster is that it's faster in most of the things that I tested on, as in like the raw compute in like Cinebench, as well as some benchmarks that uses some graphics, just like in 3D Mark, as well as some games that I'm trying to test here. But we shall see and actually find out which one's actually faster. So my test bench will be my old trusty uh, DIY test bench that I have, which just consists of an Asus C97 motherboard, the Asus Maximus 7 Gene with a Pentium G3258. Now this CPU is just a dual core Haswell CPU, which has an okay IPC by today's standard. It's nothing great, but this CPU can clock to 4.6 gigahertz and is cooled by the Scythe Byako 2 CPU cooler that I've done an unboxing of before. And this CPU handles 4.6 gigahertz pretty great, especially under this cooler, which just easily dissipates the low amount of heat that this CPU generates, being that it's only two cores. Now for testing, I just disabled one of the cores for the 4.6 GHz at one core, as well as lowering the clock speeds and voltages for the 2.3 GHz at two cores. And as well as changing the cache speed as accordingly to the clock speeds, as I can't exactly run like a 4 GHz cache with the 2.3 GHz core speed, or it'll, it'll basically just crash. So I have to lower it down to like 2 GHz for the 2.3 GHz testing. Now first, let's just check out Cinebench because this benchmark just shows you the raw compute horsepower of the CPUs. Now, if my speculation is correct, this should be pretty much the same performance for a 4.6 GHz at one core versus two cores at 2.3 GHz. And that's basically what we find out here. I also have the reference 4.6 GHz at two cores, which is the default setting for the CPU once you overclock it. It's just a two core CPU without any hyper threading. So two cores, two threads. And here we can see the 4.6 GHz one core CPU setting is basically the same performance as 2.3 GHz with two cores. And that's pretty much as expected because, you know, with two cores but half the clock speed, you theoretically have the same core throughput or compute horsepower as one core with double the clock speeds. That makes sense, right? Everyone would understand that and that's pretty much what I expected, so there's no difference there. And this just confirms that the raw performance of the CPUs at those two settings will be the same. So what's going to be different is how basically applications interact with two cores at lower clock speed or one core at higher clock speeds and how Windows handles all that. So let's try 3D Mark. First we'll start with Firestrike. And here we can see that obviously the reference setting with two cores is the fastest setting. And then we also have the two core and one core setting which you'll see as well, they have pretty similar performance actually. In terms of the final score, the two cores at 2.3 GHz is actually slightly higher, like just ever so slightly higher than the one core at 4.6 GHz. And in the CPU benchmark portion of the test, the scores are, again, the two cores at 2.3 GHz is just slightly higher, but they're pretty much neck and neck. So here in Firestrike, we can see that the reference settings is the fastest, which is pretty obvious and pretty much what everyone expected. But now we see the two cores and one core CPU settings, and we can see that most of you guys that answered in the poll are actually wrong, because the faster CPU is the two cores at 2.3 GHz, even though it's just a very tiny difference. And this difference can be seen in the CPU portion of the test as well as the combination portion, where the CPU with two cores 2.3 GHz is just ever so slightly edging out the one core at 4.6 GHz, while the graphics portion seems to really not care at all how many cores and what clock speeds you run which just basically goes to show that Firestrike is really optimized to not use the CPU at all for the graphics portion, and it's a really good tester for GPU performance. And although something really weird is that I can see that he one core at 4.6 GHz is actually the fastest one for the GPU portion only, which is quite odd because you would think that with an extra core, so two cores at 4.6 GHz, you'll still have the same 
single thread performance but have an extra core for spare other resources. But it seems like that's not the case. It's actually the slowest with the two cores at 4.6 gigahertz. It probably is just some testing variation, but it's just quite interesting to see and it's really weird. Now we'll get to Time Spy next on 3D Mark. And here in 3D Mark, we basically see the same things. And that Time Spy, again, prefers the two cores, 4.6 gigahertz, obviously the reference settings. But then you also see the two cores at 2.3 gigahertz coming in second with the one core at 4.6 gigahertz coming in third. And that makes sense because again, like a uh, fire strike and like I expected, that would be the case because it's probably due to some kind of Windows scheduling in that if you have just one core, you're gonna get interrupted a whole bunch sometimes by other background processes that's gonna have to be processed by one core. Well, if you have two cores, you can spread out the load between two cores and it's probably more uh, balanced out. And so here you can see that in the CPU portion, it's slightly faster with the two cores, 2.3 gigahertz as well. And again, in the graphics benchmarks portion, there's basically zero difference between the three CPUs, just a very slight minor difference. And yeah, that's basically showing that 3D Mark is really optimized to just fully use your GPU. It doesn't really matter what kind of CPU you have as long as it isn't way too slow. Now let's try some games. I actually just wanted to try two games well, actually three with Minecraft, but first is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but here in this game, it's actually a fail because the two cores at 4.6 GHz just ran just fine, but then the 2.3 GHz dual core and the 4.6 GHz one core just basically failed to load the game. It just got stuck in a black screen, which I think is just because the game is hanging on a process or something and CPU is not fast enough. So I don't know if that's just a bug with my system or my settings, but I'm basically using the highest settings and I can't even load the game to the menu settings. I don't even see a splash screen for this game. So moving on, I have Deus Ex as well loaded on the test bench, which, you know, I don't have that many games loaded onto it yet because I only have a really tiny SSD on it. Now in Deus Ex here, you can see that the dual core reference settings obviously is the fastest one again at 4.6 gigahertz, but then you can also see just like my prediction, the dual core at 2.3 gigahertz is actually faster than a single core at 4.6 gigahertz in this game. And you can also kind of notice it in the benchmark pass as well, in that the 4.6 gigahertz single core is a lot more stuttery and all over the place with really crappy lows and 1% lows in the FPS portion. And the 4.6 gigahertz dual core is obviously the best one, although I will say that it's probably still the bare minimum for this game. And the two cores at 2.3 gigahertz, it's actually doing quite okay. Like I can browse the menu just fine without any kind of hitching and loading weights, unlike the single core setting. So that's pretty good. It's already an improvement. And in the benchmark, it's also slightly more consistent and there's less freezes in the benchmarks as well. So as you can see, it seems like games as well as benchmarks really prefer the dual core 2.3 gigahertz CPU compared to single core at 4.6 gigahertz. Kind of what I predicted, although lots of people think the 4.6 GHz at one core is better. So I just wanted to try Minecraft because I have it on the test bench. And here in Minecraft, we can see that, of course, the reference setting is gonna be the fastest again, but even then, you're actually using more than just one core in Minecraft. I know lots of people keep saying that, oh, Minecraft is a really single threaded game and you really need a fast single core CPU, single core performance CPU. But it's not really the case anymore. Minecraft really, really pretty much uses a lot of CPU cores these days to help load the assets in the game, such as the world generation, which especially takes a lot of CPU load when you crank up the graphics settings like I did to 32 chunk render, different, render distance, which is quite heavy on the CPU. And at dual cores at 4.6 gigahertz, it's already quite a bit of struggling on the system as well. So you can imagine when I drop it down to one core at 4.6 gigahertz and 2.3 gigahertz at dual core settings, it's a lot worse. Like it's, it's basically a slideshow. I almost can't even go to the menu to exit the game. Here with the dual core at 2.3 gigahertz, even though it has two cores, it's all both maxed out. And because the cores are so slow, it barely loads the world any meaningful amount and it just is super laggy and choppy. But at least if you wait for a while, it might load slightly the world in front of you and you'll get FPS in the low tens or so, which is still unplayable at the high settings. Although you could probably lower the settings to lower render distance and have better performance if you have a CPU this low. 
but at one core at 4.6 gigahertz which you would think should be better than the 2.3 gigahertz at two cores because minecraft is a single threaded game it's not actually the case it's actually even worse because again like deus x showed as well it seems like it might be some kind of like scheduling issue with windows or it's just that's how it is but it seems like even though they have the same raw compute horsepower one core at 4.6 gigahertz just gets choked even more than two cores at half the clock speed and here in minecraft you can see it doesn't even cross 10 fps and it's super laggy and it's a slideshow you go all the way down to one fps or maybe even less and it doesn't compute there it's super unplayable and again i wouldn't recommend this i'm just trying it out for fun and again shows that minecraft is not just a purely single threaded game these days so contrary to the poll results the one core at 4.6 gigahertz is actually the slower cpu compared to the two cores at 2.3 gigahertz and maybe that's because lots of people think that higher ipc and therefore faster gaming performance means it matters more than more cores at lower clock speeds but when you're already limited to just one or two cores you really need all the threads you can have and limiting it to just one core is really not ideal especially for windows because you know the days of single core cpus are way behind us and i bet even if the cpu clocks to like 5.5 or 6 gigahertz you'll still have a better experience with two cores at 3.5 or 4 gigahertz just because more cores helps with the scheduling of the tasks between the cores and just probably provides a smoother experience overall so definitely I would say the answer is 2.3 GHz at two cores is the faster CPU. So when you're buying a CPU, don't go for the higher clock speeds if you mean that you're sacrificing a lot of the CPU cores as well. So for example, if you're getting like a dual core CPU with really high clock speeds versus a quad core CPU with lower clock speeds, I would just always get the quad core CPU. Although if you're getting something like six plus cores on your CPU, which is way more than enough threads for games and lots of applications these days, I would probably lean toward the six core higher clock speeds compared to a higher core count with lower clock speed CPU, just because you already have enough threads and core count at that point. But anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you do enjoy it. And if you do, maybe leave a like and maybe click subscribe to see more of my future videos, such as seeing interesting things like this, as well as reviews and unboxings and other news as well that I might do time to time. But that's it for this video and thank you for watching.